All right, welcome back to Community Focus here on Channel 6 TV. Glad you could be with us. Kenny Fogel here with me. Got Robbie Smith here with us today. And Robbie's going to tell us a little bit about, well, first of all, thank you for being here, Robbie. Appreciate you showing Glad up. You're with the UK Extension Office here in Bardstown. Thanks, and I, I know that people keep you busy. Well, I, I'm a, I was going to say this time of year, but I think it's pretty much year round, isn't it? It is pretty much year round, but spring is uh, especially uh, full, yeah. if you will. Well, people are starting to pay attention right now. I mean, obviously, yeah. during, I know I've come to you over the years for a dead tree. You find out what's caused that. And, and during the winter time, there's different things going on. But right now, everybody's, uh, they went through a rough winter, and all the snow out of the way. Now they're t breaking up a little patch of land and calling it a garden. Yeah, so, right. And I know I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure you get a lot of people wanting to know how to make the best tomato plants in the world. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, you know, that's been a real focus for a lot of folks the last uh, five or six years as uh -huh. a garden, uh, kind of a food security thing, growing yeah. their own. And it's been a real focus. And we've done a lot of classes and workshops on growing gardens and all kinds of different uh, aspects of the garden. So it's been real exciting, folks getting back to that a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know I went out a couple days ago. I, last year I had this trouble with the, the tomatoes that blossom in rot, yeah. they call it. Had a lot of trouble with it. Somebody told me to put out a little lime. Maybe I, did, I needed some lime. So I limed my garden this yeah. year, put a little fertilizer on it. So what else, am I, am I in good shape or what, what more should I be doing right now? Well, usually in Nelson County, we are good on calcium. Uh -huh. So lime and calcium are not usually an issue. When we get blossom in rot on tomatoes, it's always... A, a problem with watering. Okay. So we're going through a cycle of dry to wet to dry to wet. So mm -hmm. calcium goes to building cell walls. The last thing on that plant is the fruit. The last thing on the fruit is the end, the blossom mm -hmm. end of it. So there's not enough calcium being taken up at the right times to be deposited at that end of the flower or the yeah. fruit. And then we end up with rot going on. So it's, uh, it's not a disease. It's not a, uh, usually not a soil issue. It's more of a cultural issue where we just need to have constant water moist uh, through the uh, root zone through the whole course of the season. So in drop times, add a little water. Yeah. And, now, I, I did hear this one time, and I may be totally wrong. I want you to correct me. But basically, constancy is probably one of the best things, yeah. I mean, even in temperature. Yeah. I mean, I know the up and down in temperature is not good for a garden. Yeah, you know, when we have real hot summers like we've had in uh -huh. the past, um, shading those tomatoes a little bit doesn't hurt a thing. Yeah. They still get plenty of uh, sunlight and can grow just fine, but this little shade keeps the fruit from burning, keeps the leaves, uh, keeps the plant uh, under less stress so you get better tasting fruit and so mm -hmm. forth. So you can even do that and be uh, not harm the plant at all. So what other kind of crops are we, uh, the average farmer putting out? I know I'm the tomato, squash, and onions, maybe two or three other little things, but nothing major. Well, green beans and uh, sweet corn are always gonna be staples in the mm -hmm. garden. Um, there are some, you know, uh, the, the lettuces will be, you know, in my garden right now, I've got peas, lettuce of two kinds and cabbage. And I'm gonna start putting out the, uh, the other crops here probably this weekend mm -hmm. as, a, as we look forward a little bit and see what the temperature's gonna look like because these last few days have been pretty rough on tomatoes that have been out in the garden. Yeah. As those first tomatoes coming off, we're gonna look gnarly as all get out <laughs> because below 55, uh, the fruit really struggles to sit mm -hmm. on a tomato and you get really rough looking fruit and cracking and splitting and everything else on them. So once we warm up, that all kind of changes, but that first fruit can, when we get that real low temperatures like we've had. Okay, so frost is not the only thing you need to be concerned right, with yeah. is your tomatoes. Yeah, and you know, when you get out plants too early, you end up with uh, uh, plants just sitting there. Yeah. When you don't have a soil temperature warm enough, they just sit there and they're not happy. You know, one uh, landscape plant that comes to mind is vinca. Mm -hmm. Real pretty periwinkle that you can buy in the store, but it does not like cold soil. Mm. You need to really wait till the end of May to put that one out, and then it's happy as a lark. But when it's when it's cool soil, it just will sit there and rot. Now, see, I'm one of these pieces of people that don't have the patience to wait very long. So <laughs> yeah. I break my garden up. I see and, a lot of those. And <laughs> a lot of people say, you know, to get it, wait till Derby Day yeah. or 10th of May before you put your tomatoes and things out. Yeah. And I said, so I always try to get the jump and think I'm really beating Mother Nature, yeah. but I'm really not beating Mother sometimes Nature. Sometimes you are and sometimes you're not. <laughs> just, you know, that average of May 10th, last frost date, or yeah. whatever it is, like it's 15th or 10th. You know, there are, so to get an average, you got to have dates on both sides of that, right? Yeah. So we, you know, I think last year, didn't we have a little frost on, or a few years ago, we had a little frost on the 22nd of May. Mm. It may be one of the later times, but, you know, we can get them pretty late. Yeah. And uh, you just have to be cognizant of that. And well, I ask you a little bit about corn. Corn mm. is one of the things I always have a hard time growing. Now, I know some people that grow a lot, lot, lot of it have a better luck than probably yeah. a small garden because the timing on that has to be so perfect. Yeah. I mean, it's either going to be soft or if you wait just too long, my wife said it wouldn't fit for the hogs to eat. So right. right. Yeah, you definitely don't want to see a dent in the top of that 
of the kernel. When you peel it back, uh -huh. you want to see it nice and round, uh, good and juicy. Uh, right about the time the when you see the very end of the silk starting to turn, mm -hmm. you still want to see mostly white, clean, or green silk, uh, not dry silk. When you get dry silk, it's usually a little too late. Yeah. So you're going to kind of get a little. So early. you're going to judge it by the end of the silk, basically. Yeah, that, and just peel them back and look at that the kernels. Mm -hmm. When you're getting too late, you'll. Uh, you don't have much in my book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some <laughs> well, I don't like that. Well, I'm, I, I, yeah. I didn't. I didn't have good luck with that the last few years. So yeah. I, last year, I didn't even fool with the corn at all. Yeah. So I quit fooling with corn because every time I put it out, the raccoons would get it, and uh -huh. before I could ever get to it, they would eat it. So well, that's another trouble, obviously, in in Kentucky, especially out in rural areas like this. We got the raccoons, squirrels, rabbits. If I can get in there, yeah. I had a fence around mine last year. I didn't do it this year, but. Uh, uh, that helped a little bit, yeah. but I, I still see rabbits going. They, they, they Oh, yeah, they're pretty savvy. I, one of the fun stories, I when I was an uh, intern at the Arboretum of the UK, I was sitting on the back bench eating lunch and watched a rabbit come into the chicken wire fence. <laughs> he got his legs on top of it and rode it down to get in, and then when he got in and ate, he put his nose under it and came out. <laughs> so he had already worked that out well ahead. Oh, yeah, when it comes, it comes that. Let's talk a little bit about the, you talked about earlier that why people are doing gardening. Now, there is an advantage to having oh, yeah. fresh fruit. I mean, obviously, if you go to the grocery store, you're going to get fruit and vegetables, but a lot of them have been something or they may, something to preserve them or something else. Probably not anything to preserve, but they're picked not uh, totally right. Yeah. So they're shipped from across the country, from, from wherever, and they're picked. Like a tomato is picked at what they call the starburst stage. So it's got a little red on the blossom end of it, yeah. and it's green otherwise. And it ripens across the country as it comes because they put off ethylene and they'll ripen on their own in the mm -hmm. truck. Um, you still get a pretty good flavor out of those, but it's not like going out and picking that one off the vine yeah. that you've watched for a few days. And it's just the perfect moisture, the perfect flavor, uh, and you've got all the, all the uh, good stuff in there that you can get. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's a big advantage on on flavor, on taste, on quality when you get it out of the backyard. That's as fresh as it can be. It's, it is, and I know a lot of people are going into more organic gardening yeah. too. People are learning, I think. I think people yeah. are becoming more educated as to what it is. You just put the seed in the ground and well, shoot to the sky like they used to say. We're, we're, we're going back to gardening the way we used to garden. Yeah. You know, uh, Gardening is not for a lazy man. Mm -hmm. You got to use the cold hard steel mm -hmm. and you got to be able to, willing out there to, to, to make sure you got a clean, place for the plants to grow and stay with it so it's but a lot of folks are really enjoying that I was talking mm -hmm. to a gentleman today that's gardening uh, flower gardening and it's really just for therapy to help you know get him through uh, loss of a, a spouse and yeah. he's, he enjoys being out there and it's just a pleasure and yeah. a lot of folks take pleasure in that in that way yeah all right, and you just mentioned flower gardens. A lot, a lot of the people are into flowers more oh, now than they used yeah. to be. You see, even on Facebook, you see a lot of people really proud of some of the flowers they have. What, what's the flowers that grow in this area more so than? Is there any particular flower that's more? Are we just pretty much open to anything to handle the summer? We're pretty wide open. Mm -hmm. We we can grow a lot of things. You know, you just got to pay attention to your hardiness zones. Yeah, uh, we're a six A or six B. I think they changed us on changed it on us, but you got to pay attention to that. But we can, for an annual, we can grow about anything you want to outside. Mm -hmm. we got a pretty good long growing season, um, and, it, and it works real well. We've got Old Farmer's Almanac. It tells us it's going to be a decent year this year. What do you see as far as, yeah, I know you're not a weather forecaster, yeah. but uh, are you predicting anything in the gardening area? Well, you know, just as soon as you predict, you're wrong, right? <laughs> All right. It, it almost feels like one of those years that uh, we're, we're wet and you, you turn off the spigot. Yeah. I'm afraid that it'll be that. I hope it's not. You know, yeah. I hope it's a, a pretty moderate year. I think, you know, last year was pretty good for most part. We had mm -hmm. some dry pockets and so forth. But uh, you just never know about that. It could change in a, in a you know, they had us in a moderate drought yeah. um, about a month or two ago in yeah. February. Yeah. And then we got, what, two... Yeah. Four foot of snow or whatever oh, it was. Just in a couple of days, that changed yeah. around. Now, you, when you're fertilizing, now, like I said, I do fertilizing. I fertilized in the fall and I fertilized in the spring. What's the, is there an advantage to either now, one of those? Now, what you fertilizing? Well, it usually is 10, 10, 10. Just, just July? No. Oh, no, no, no. no. Uh, just my garden. Oh, yeah, your spot. garden, yeah. So, um, usually, yeah, you can fertilize your garden in the fall. You, you shouldn't, if you fertilize in the fall, you shouldn't really have to put much on in the spring, but mm -hmm. you can. You can fertilize your garden in the spring too, so one or the other. And the advantage um, for a vegetable garden would mm -hmm. be probably the spring. Oh, really? Because you're going to break it and put it in there. Right. Uh, unless you need to 
break down organic matter through the course of the winter. Then mm -hmm. you put it on in the fall. Some oh, fertilizer okay. on. So well, I was always afraid I was going to put too much on and yeah. burn the roots up or something. Well, I mean, that's possible. Yeah, uh, that's possible. We always like most folks put on the fertilize uh, up front, as we call it, before yeah. the garden goes in and then side dress particular crops as they need it. You know, mm -hmm. and we've got a really handy little book over at the Extension Office. It's uh, Vegetable Gardening in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. it's, Matter of uh, fact, I got the book. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a real handy book. Got all kinds of charts of, you know, for example, a chart on when is the best time to fertilize several different crops, your yeah. tomatoes, your corn, so forth. It tells you the phenology of the plant, what it looks like when you're going to fertilize. So, you know, on tomatoes, I think it's something like uh, uh, six, no, it's uh, some days before flower. Mm -hmm. You want to, for, for the first uh, picking. Uh, you want to fertilize. So, you know, stop by the office and pick up one of those. It's got a lot of information. It does, it does. I, I got that. And I know also you've been dealing with a lot of trees and mm -hmm. dealing with herbicides and things like that. I mean, I've, I've approached you on a, we, I talked to you last year about the, the I know the, the ash tree, you know, we've never uh, had that ash borer in Nelson County as far as we know. As far as we know, we have, we have not seen it. Uh, it's not been tramped. It's not been brought into the office. Uh -huh. It's not been seen. Um, but it's close, so we fully expect that it's probably somewhere yeah. in the county. I know it's in Spencer County, it's in Radcliffe, Louisville, uh, Shelby County, all the way around us kind of, but it's not that we have found in Nelson County yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's going to be a booger when it gets here. It is. And again, if you have any questions about this stuff, I mean, this is it, uh, Robbie's the expert on this. So we invite people to stop in, That's bring right. it to the office. And I know you do go out and do some visits if, you, yes, if possible. Absolutely. We're at 317 South 3rd Street. So we'd be glad to, to see you uh, come through the doors there. Um, and yes, we're probably one of the only agencies, I guess, left that does uh, home visits if we need to. Yeah. We mostly time... Uh, solve those issues over the phone. But there's, uh, you know, several occasions uh, a month that I'll need to go out and visit them. Mm. Yeah. So we're not expert farmers, none of us, <laughs> not much of us anyway. You got a few that may know what they're doing. But uh, if you're like me, you're a, you're a backyard farmer that's a, that grew up on a farm, but the, but uh, I don't eat tobacco, so that's what we grew <laughs> then. So. We grew <laughs> <But>, uh, <laughs> so again, it's a whole different world there, and, and every crop is different. That's so right. I, I know, and so hopefully Robbie will have the answer if you're able to. So give him a call. Robbie, appreciate you coming. I know you're, got, to be here. you're busy moving from one place to the other this time of year, yep. and we're going to get you out of here, but appreciate you stopping by tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks a lot for being here. All right. Robbie Smith here with the UK Extension Office here in Barstown, 317 South 3rd Street in Barstown. If you want to stop in and get some literature and just you know, ask a question or two, and we hope you have the best garden you've ever had. Kenny Fogel here saying so long. We'll see you next time here on Community Focus. Take care, everybody.